Hello and welcome to Camisado. I am Balraj and today I will discuss the negatives of the Green Revolution and uh, let's start with the term Green Revolution itself. So the term Green Revolution seems to be a misnomer. Misnomer means a name that is not very appropriate and the reason for this is that the Green Revolution was essentially a wheat revolution. So we could have simply called it a wheat revolution. And since uh, this new revolution required a lot of fertilizers, pesticides and hybrid seeds, so we could have called it scientific agriculture, but uh, not essentially green revolution because it was only about the quantum jump in the growth of wheat, primarily. So primarily only wheat was in focus. So that is why it seems that the term green revolution is a misnomer. So now we need to answer this important question that did wheat flourish on account of its own strength? So the answer is no, because Indians were not predominantly wheat eaters. So if you look at states like uh, Tamil Nadu, Keral, Assam, West Bengal, Odisha. So in these states, rice is very popular. If you look at states like Rajasthan, so earlier millets were very popular here. So millets include crops like Jawar, Bajra, Ragi. Of course, Ragi was uh, more popular in the southern part of the country. Uh, but millets like Jawar and Bajra were popular in Rajasthan. So Indians were not predominantly wheat eaters. Wheat was imposed on them and wheat was brought under minimum support price. And on account of this, the farmers preferred growing wheat. And due to this, other crops like millets suffered, pulses suffered, which are a very important source of protein and oil seeds also suffered, which give us edible oil. So this led to nutritional imbalances in the population because millets have higher nutritional content than wheat. So millets are actually far better for our health than wheat and pulses, of course, because they are a source of protein. So due to this, nutritional imbalances also started occurring in the population. So other than the nutritional imbalances, crop imbalances also occurred because these high yielding varieties of wheat were so commercially viable that the farmers preferred these over any other crops. And let me give you a food for thought. You might have observed that by and large, normally we have very huge buffer stocks of wheat. So one of the reasons for this could be that Indians were not predominantly wheat eaters. So we were predominantly rice eaters and millets were also popular. So that is why you'll observe that uh, we always have huge buffer stocks of wheat. So green revolution was implemented most vigorously in the northwestern part of the country, this region consisting of Punjab, Haryana and western UP. Now this region was chosen on purpose because wheat was agroclimatically most suitable for this region on account of being a temperate crop. Moreover, this region also had a very good network of canals and irrigation was not a problem. It had one of the best irrigation systems in place and the farmers were also very progressive. They had the spirit of entrepreneurship. They were willing to adopt new technology. So that is why this region was uh, ready for the implementation of Green Revolution and the farm size was also relatively larger. So that is why this region was an appropriate region. And uh, due to the selection of this region, we were able to tide over the problem in just five, six years. And if we, uh, we would have chosen any other region or if we tried to implement it all through the country, the effect would have been diluted. However, on account of this, the regional disparities got accentuated. And if you remember, since the second five year plan, the reduction of regional disparities has been one of the goals. That is why the choice of selection of the northwestern part of the country most vigorously for implementation led to accentuation of the regional disparities in terms of income, agricultural development and uh, other variables. So this was also one of the uh, negatives of Green Revolution, but we had no other choice. We could not have chosen any other region. This was actually the best region for the selection uh, of vigorous implementation of Green Revolution. 
so the green revolution became class specific that is the rich farmers were benefited far far more than the of uh, small and marginal farmers so this was because these high yielding varieties of wheat required assured supply of irrigation water and this required the farmers to purchase pump sets moreover fertilizers were required and these varieties were also more prone to pest attacks therefore pesticides were required and the rich farmers had a greater capacity of investing in this in these requirements like pump sets fertilizers pesticides even though the government provided the subsidy but the rich farmers also took advantage of the subsidy in fact they took more advantage of the subsidies provided by the government and the small and marginal farmers continued to grow the traditional varieties of wheat even though let me tell you the traditional varieties of wheat as we now know are actually far better for our health they have better nutritional content but the farmers uh, continued to the the small and marginal farmers continued to grow the traditional varieties of wheat and they could not compete with the high yielding varieties of wheat therefore the small the small and marginal farmers were actually pushed out of the system so the small and marginal farmers could not compete with the rich farmers because the rich farmers took more advantage of the subsidies given by the government the small and marginal farmers could not afford the expensive fertilizers pesticides and pump sets because the risk taking capacity of the rich farmers was greater of course it is always true a rich man has a far greater risk taking capacity than a poor person so now let us look at the angle of monetization and mechanization of indian agriculture after the advent of green revolution see prior to the advent of green revolution farmers used to use locally produced manures but after green revolution farmers started using chemical fertilizers and pesticides and remember the more the chemical fertilizers and pesticides you use the greater is your distance from sustainable agriculture however there are some advantages also of monetization monetization means that money came into agriculture in a big way so this led to better integration with industry and the backward and forward linkages of agriculture and industry were strengthened so this was an advantage but a disadvantage of it was that due to monetization mechanization also came into agriculture mechanization means that the use of machines increased for example tractors harvesters this increased and we should remember in the indian context we have a lot of landless laborers and small and marginal farmers who cannot afford these expensive machines and primarily the landless laborers were pushed out of the system because one machine could do the work of a lot of landless laborers so due to this a lot of out migration from villages to urban areas also started and labor unrest and agrarian unrest also happened in the 70s so this was also one of the outcomes of green revolution and so you will notice that uh, during this period of 70s and onwards government launched a lot of programs for the benefit of small and marginal farmers so when it comes to mechanization you can use uh, this term selective mechanization so in the indian context we should promote selective mechanization and not a very large scale mechanization because we have a lot of landless laborers also who are dependent on Uh, agriculture uh, for their livelihood they work in the fields of others so if there is a very large scale mechanization the landless laborers would lose their jobs so uh, you can write that we need selective mechanization more uh, instead of very large scale mechanization moreover uh, when monetization and uh, commercialization of the indian agriculture occurred this also led to the land reforms getting sidelined so the government also became a little lenient on the land reforms so these also got a little sidelined one not much talked about aspect of green revolution uh, was that money came in the hands of a traditional society and some of these people misused this money and used the modern medical technology to do sex selective abortions and female feticide and you can uh, consider the example of punjab so in punjab the sex ratio has been low so one of the reasons for this could be that uh, green revolution uh, gave a lot of money to 
people who had a traditional mindset so they had a natural preference for sons so i'm not saying that it happened only in punjab but we can look at the example of punjab uh, for this so now let us look at the effect of green revolution on environment and ecology so from crop diversification we reached to monoculture monoculture means that you are just growing one type of crop in a field for example just wheat wheat and wheat or rice rice and rice so monocultures are always more prone to diseases and pest attacks and therefore the use of chemical pesticides also increased and this use of chemical pesticides not just damaged the soil it also killed the friendly organisms and it also damaged the water table the ground water also got polluted by pesticides and the fertilizers that were used those also got inf uh, infiltrated into the ground water the high yielding varieties of wheat required an assured supply of irrigation therefore tube wells and pump sets were in great demand and this led to decline of the water table and there is one important aspect of the aquifers if the aquifers lose the water and if there is high overlying weight of the land above these get compressed and these air spaces in the aquifers gets compressed and these aquifers can get permanently damaged if you remove too much water therefore in the green revolution areas not not just the water table dropped but even the aquifers which hold water they also got damaged so this uh, was also one of the negative aspects of green revolution so thank you for watching this video and please stay tuned i will upload more such videos and this is balraj singh signing out